Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to explain and practice L'Hopital's rule. First, let's see what the L'Hopital's rule is. If limit as x is approaching to a, where a can be a real number, infinity or negative infinity, equals to 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity in determinate forms, then this limit will be equal to limit as x is approaching to a, the same limit, of derivative of top over derivative of bottom. So if our limit is equal to 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, this is indeterminate form. Then we take the derivative of numerator and derivative of denominator and take the same limit. If we still obtain 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity, we take derivative one more time. So we apply Ropita's rule second time until we get a real value. Let's see the examples and practice. Let's see our first example. Limit as x is approaching to 2, x to the fourth minus 16, or x squared minus 4. Our first approach is to direct plug-in. So we plug in 2 and we get 2 to the 4th power minus 16 over 2 to the 2nd power minus 4. So this is 16 minus 16, which is 0. This is 4 minus 4, which is 0. Because it is 0 over 0 in determinate form, then we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So limit as x is approaching to 2 of x to the 4th minus 16 over x squared minus 4 is equal to, by L'Hopital, limit as x is approaching to 2 of the derivative of top over derivative of bottom. So derivative of x to the 4th is 4x to the 3rd and derivative of 16 is 0. And derivative of x squared is 2x and derivative of negative 4 is 0. Now we're going to take this limit. Now we can directly plug in because we have no limitation here now. So 4 times 2 to the third power over 2 times 2. So 2 to the third is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. 32 over 4 which is 8. So this limit is approaching to 8. Let's see it graphically. If we observe the graph, we can see that our function is undefined at 2, but the limit at 2 is approaching to 8 because left limit and the right limit is equal to 8. Let's go ahead and see example 2. In this example, we have limit as x is approaching to negative 1, x to the third plus 5x squared plus 6x plus 2, all over x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now we're going to direct the plug in negative 1 to see what the value is. We have negative 1 to the third power plus 5 times negative 1 to the second power plus 6 times negative 1 plus 2. We have negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 3 on the denominator. If you do this arithmetics, you can get 0 over 0. This is indeterminate form and this allows us to use the L'Hopital's rule. So by L'Hopital, this limit is equal to limit as x is approaching to negative 1 of the derivative of top over derivative of bottom. So we're going to take the derivative of numerator. Derivative of x to the third is 3x squared. Derivative of x squared is 2x times 5 is 10x. And derivative of 6x is 6. Derivative of 2 is 0. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of 4x is just 4. Now we can plug in our negative 1 because we have no restriction here. 3 times negative 1 squared plus 10 times negative 1 plus 6 all over 2 times negative 1 plus 4. 
On the numerator we obtain negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 3 is 3. 3 plus negative 10 is negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. And here we obtain just 2. So our limit is approaching to negative 1 half. Let's check this example. We have limit as x is approaching to 3, this function over that function. If you direct the plug in 3, you're going to see that this is going to be equal to 0 over 0. So we're going to apply L'Hopital. So we're going to take the derivative of numerator and derivative of denominator. Derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 5 is 0, and derivative of this expression, let's remember derivative of square root of x is equal to 1 over 2 times square root of x. So here we're going to apply the chain rule. So you can consider x squared plus 3x minus 2 is altogether like our x here. So if you take the derivative here carefully, you're going to obtain 2x plus 3, which is the derivative of inside, divided by 2 times derivative of x, which is everything inside. Here we have the same situation. So derivative of this is 1 over 2 times x plus 6. And derivative of 3 is 0. If you're fluent with taking derivative of square root expressions, you're gonna make it faster. Or you can go slowly and do this. x squared plus 3x minus 2 can be expressed as to the power of 1 half. So you can apply the power rule and chain rule. Take the power to the front, subtract 1 from the power, times derivative of inside. So you're going to obtain the same expression here. Now we simplified. We took the derivatives of both top and bottom. Now we can direct the plug in 3. And if you do this arithmetics, you're going to obtain 117 over 4. Let's see example 4. Limit as x is approaching to 0, tangent 7x over tangent of 3x. If we plug in x as 0, tangent of 0 is equal to 0. So this is going to be 0 over 0 in determinate form. So by L'Hopital, this limit is equal to derivative of top over derivative of bottom as x is approaching to 0. Derivative of tangent of x is equal to secant squared of x. And secant squared of x is equal to 1 over cosine squared of x. So in our case, the derivative of tangent of 7x will be 1 over cosine squared of 7x times 7 by the chain rule. Because we're going to multiply by the derivative of inside function. And similarly, we're going to have same. So we're going to have 1 over cosine squared of 3x times 3. So now we can plug in 0. Cosine 0 is 1. So here we obtain 7 over 1 and here we obtain 3 over 1. Then this fraction is equal to 7 over 3. Let's check this example. In this limit, let's plug in 2. So we have 2 to the third minus 6 times 2 to the second power plus 12 times 2 minus 8. We have 2 to the second minus 4 times 2 plus 4 at the denominator. So here 2 to the third is 8 and 4 times 6 is 24. 24 minus 8 is 16 from here and here we have 24 minus 8 another 16 so 0 and here we have 2 to the second is 4 
4 minus 8 is negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So we have 0 over 0 in determinate form. So we can apply L'Hopital. First, we are going to take the derivative of top. So limit as x is approaching to 2. Our fraction on top will be derivative of x to the third is 2x squared. And derivative of 6x squared is 12x. And derivative of 12x is 12. Derivative of negative 8 is 0. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of 4x is 4. Now we're going to plug in 2 again. So we obtain 2 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 12 all over 2 times 2 minus 4. Here we obtain 0 on the denominator. We have 4 times 2 is 8. This is 24 plus 12. So here we obtain again 0. So our 0 over 0 in determinate form continues. So we're going to take L'Hopital rule again. So we're going to take derivative one more time. So limit as x is approaching to 2. Derivative of this is 4x. Derivative of this is 12. Derivative of 2x is 2. Now we can plug in 2. 4 times 2 minus 12 over 2. So that's going to be negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So negative 2 is the answer. So when you come across 0 over 0 in determinate form, you're going to take the derivative one more time until you satisfy the conditions to plug in. Example 6. This time we're going to take the limit of sine of pi over 2x minus 1 over cosine pi x plus 1 as x is approaching to 1. So our first approach is to plug in 1. But before that, let's see the sine and cosine values on the unit circle. So let's write some reference angles. 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 4. So sine and cosine values here. X coordinate here is 1 and the Y coordinate here is 0. So our cosine is 1 and our sine is 0. Here our X coordinate is 0, our Y coordinate is 1, so our cosine is 0, our sine is 1. Here our x coordinate is negative 1, our y coordinate is 0, so our cosine and sine values are negative 1 and 0. And here our x value is 0, our y value is negative 1, so our cosine and sine is as follows. We also need to know the derivatives of sine and cosine, so I would like to illustrate that on the unit circle here as well. Let this be our cosine positive direction, negative cosine direction, sine positive direction, and negative sine direction. So if we go to clockwise, we get the derivatives of each trigonometric functions. Now we can start. When we plug in x as 1, we obtain sine of pi over 2 minus 1 over cosine of pi plus 1. Sine over 2 is equal to 1 and we have negative 1 here. Cosine pi is equal to negative 1 and we have plus 1 here. So we have 0 over 0 in determinate form. So we have ticket to use L'Hopital. So our original limit is equal to by L'Hopital the derivative of top over derivative of the bottom. So we're going to take the derivative of sine of pi over 2x. So derivative of sine is cosine and we need to multiply it by the derivative of inside function using the chain rule. So derivative of pi over 2x is pi over 2 times cosine pi over 2x. So this is the derivative of the top 
and derivative of negative 1 is 0 and this is limit as x is approaching to 1 and the derivative of the bottom derivative of cosine is negative sine so we have negative sine here derivative of inside function is just pi and we have sine of pi x using the chain rule and derivative of 1 is 0 now we're going to use this fraction if we plug in 1 we obtain pi over 2 cosine pi over 2 over negative pi sine of pi and cosine pi over 2 is 0 and 0 times anything is 0 and sine of pi is 0 and anything times 0 is 0 so we have again 0 over 0 in determinate form so we're going to apply L'Hopital's rule one more time so the original limit is equal to again second time L'Hopital this time we're going to take the derivative of the final limit we were doing so we're going to take the derivative of top derivative of cosine is negative sine but before that let's simplify this fraction pi over 2 over negative pi is negative 1 half so we can get rid of pi so we have negative 1 half times cosine of pi over 2x sine pi x now we're going to take the derivative of this derivative of cosine is negative sine let's rewrite everything first limit as x is approaching to 1 of negative 1 half times derivative of cosine is negative sine times the derivative of inside function so pi over 2 and we have negative sine sine of pi over 2x derivative of sine if we go back here derivative of sine is cosine we go just one step clockwise so this is gonna be pi cosine pi x because we're going to multiply by the derivative of inside function now we're going to plug in 1 if we plug in 1 instead of x we obtain negative 1 half from here and if we simplify this again we also obtain negative one half and sine of pi over two let's check again pi over two sine is one and cosine pi is negative one so one over negative one if we plug in one here if we plug in one here we obtain sine of pi over 2 which is equal to 1 here we obtain cosine of pi we obtain negative 1 now this is the answer of the original limit which is going to be negative 1 fourth so our limit as x is approaching to 1 of this fraction equals to negative 1 fourth example 7 limit as x is approaching to infinity x squared minus x over x squared plus x minus 1 our first step is to plug in infinity so when we plug in infinity we obtain infinity squared minus infinity over infinity squared plus infinity minus 1 so the numerator will be infinity and the denominator will be infinity so here we have infinity over infinity in determinate form because we were looking for either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity to be able to use L'Hopital's rule so now we can use L'Hopital so limit as x is approaching to infinity of x squared minus x over x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to by L'Hopital limit as x is approaching to infinity of the derivative of top over derivative of the bottom derivative of x squared is 2x and derivative of x is 1 derivative of x squared is 2x 
derivative of x is 1, derivative of negative 1 is 0. Now we plug infinity again. 2 times infinity minus 1 over 2 times infinity plus 1. This is again infinity over infinity. So we're going to apply L'Hopital one more time. So our original limit is equal to, again by L'Hopital, the derivative of this over derivative of that. Limit as x is approaching to infinity. Derivative of 2x is 2 and derivative of negative 1 is 0. Similarly, 2 and 0. And this ratio is equal to 1. So this original limit is equal to 1. We have practical method for this. If the highest power of numerator and the denominator is equal, in our case squared squared, then we take the ratio of the coefficients here. Coefficient of x is 0, 1. Coefficient of x is 0, 1. So 1 over 1 is 1. Either method, you obtain 1. But in the future, you're going to use this method. Let me make a chart here. So numerator, denominator. If numerator is greater than denominator, so numerator is greater than denominator, as in this example, then our limit diverts. It can be positive or negative infinity, it diverts. If numerator is less than denominator, then our limit approaches to zero. And if our numerator and denominator is equal, let's say ax squared, bx squared, then our limit is a over b, which is the ratio of the coefficients here. So in our case, our highest power is x squared, our highest power is x squared, so we take the ratio of the coefficients. When do we use this? When x is approaching to infinity or negative infinity. So this practical information will be useful to take the limit very fast. Let's check another example. We have just learned a very practical information that if the highest power in a numerator is greater than the highest power in the denominator, then our limit diverts. If the highest power in the numerator is less than the highest power in the denominator, then our limit approaches to zero. If they are equal, then we take the ratio of the coefficients. So in our example eight, we have highest power x squared, in the numerator and the highest power x to the third in the denominator. Since the highest power in the numerator is less than the highest power in the denominator, then this limit does not exist. It diverts. Let's check the next example. The highest power here is 2x to the fifth. We don't care the rest. They are not important. And the highest power in the denominator is 3x to the fifth, and the rest is not important. Since the highest powers are equal, we just take the ratio of the coefficients. So this limit is 2 thirds. Example 10. Limit, as x is approaching to 0, tangent of 6x over sine of 2x. If we plug in 0 instead of x, we obtain tangent of 0 which is 0 and sine of 0 is 0 so we have 0 over 0 in determinate form that allows us to use L'Hopital's rule so limit as x is approaching to 0 tangent of 6x over sine of 2x is equal to limit as x is approaching to 0 derivative of top over derivative of bottom by the L'Hopital's rule Derivative of tangent of 6x is secant squared of 6x times derivative of inside function using the chain rule. Derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. Here we apply the chain rule. 
So on top we obtain 6. Instead of secant squared, we can use 1 over cosine squared. Secant squared of x is equal to 1 over cosine squared of x. So here instead of secant squared of x, we can use 1 over cosine squared of 6x. So on top we obtain 6 over cosine squared of 6x. And derivative of sine is cosine times the derivative of inside function. So we obtain 2 cosine of 2x. Now we can plug in 0 because there is no restriction. Cosine of 0 is 1. So we obtain here 1 squared, which is 1. So 6 over 1 is 6. Cosine of 0 is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. So we obtain 6 over 2, 3. So this limit is approaching to 3. Example 11. Limit as x is approaching to 0 e to the negative 4x minus 1 over e to the 6x minus 1. If we plug in 0, we obtain e to the 0 and e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Again, if we plug in 0, e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we obtain 0 over 0 in determinate form. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So limit as x is approaching to 0 e to the negative 4x minus 1 over e to the 6x minus 1 is equal to derivative of numerator over derivative of the denominator. Derivative of e to the negative 4x is negative 4 e to the negative 4x and derivative of negative 1 is 0. Derivative of e to the 6x is 6 e to the 6x and derivative of 1 is 0. Now we can plug in 0. This everything has to be written after limit. Now we can plug in 0. So negative 4 e to the negative 4 times 0 over 6 e to the 6 times 0. This expression becomes e to the 0. This expression becomes e to the 0. Anything to the 0 of power is 1. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. 6 times 1 is 6. So this is going to be negative 2 thirds. Let's check out example 12. Limit as x is approaching to infinity, x to the 1 fifth plus x to the negative 1 fifth all over x to the 1 fifth minus x to the negative 1 fifth. If you have these kind of fractions, you're going to simplify by dividing each terms by the dominant term. So here the dominant term is the x with one fifth power. So we're going to divide each term by x to the one fifth to simplify. Limit as x is approaching to infinity, x to the one fifth divided by x to the one fifth plus x to the negative one fifth, our original term here, divided by x to the one fifth. Again, our original term x to the one fifth, x to the negative one fifth, each of them will be divided by x to the one fifth. So if you divide each term by the same number, you don't change the fraction. So this fraction here is one, anything divided by itself is one, and this is also one. So from the first term we have 1, from the first term we have 1. x to the negative 1 fifth divided by x to the 1 fifth is equal to x to the negative 1 fifth minus 1 fifth. We can merge the powers using the exponential rules. So this is going to be x to the negative 2 fifth. Similarly, same number, so we obtain x to the negative 2 fifth. And x to the negative 2 fifth is equal to 1 over x to the positive 2 fifths. 
and when we plug in infinity 1 over infinity is equal to 0 so as x is approaching to infinity this term goes to 0 this term goes to 0 because it is 1 over infinity so we have 1 over 1 which is 1 so this limit is approaching to 1 so if you have these kind of fractions you will start by simplifying by dividing each term by the dominant term example 13 limit as x is approaching to infinity e to the 8x plus e to the negative 8x all over 2e to the 8x minus e to the negative 4x we're going to start by simplifying this fraction so we're going to divide each term by the dominant term here our dominant term is the 8x power because it is the highest among all so limit as x is approaching to infinity e to the 8x plus e to the negative 8x 2e to the 8x minus e to the negative 4x each term will be divided by e to the 8x so if we divide each term by the same quantity we don't change the fraction here this fraction is 1 anything divided by itself is 1 here this fraction is 2 times 1 2 this fraction over here is e to the negative 8x minus 8x we are merging the powers using the exponential rules so this is going to be e to the negative 16x and this fraction here will be e to the negative 4x minus 8x which is e to the negative 12x and we can express e to the negative 16x as 1 over e to the positive 16x similarly this is going to be e to the 12x under 1 so we can rewrite our limit as x is approaching to infinity from the first term we obtain 1 from the second term we obtained 1 over e to the 16x this term on the numerator we obtain 2 minus and from the last term here we obtain 1 over e to the 12x when we plug in infinity here we have e to the infinity is infinity and 1 over infinity is 0 so we know that 1 over infinity is 0 similarly this is going to be 1 over infinity which is 0 so we have one half left so this limit is approaching to one half example 13 limit as x is approaching to 0 e to the 7x sine of 3x over e to the 3x sine of 4x if we plug in 0 we know that sine of 0 is equal to 0 so top will be 0 and the bottom will be 0 so we can use L'Hopital's rule so we're going to take the derivative of top and derivative of bottom here we have to be careful that we have to apply product rule when we are taking the derivative because these two functions are in multiplication form so let's rewrite our limit limit as x is approaching to 0 this limit is equal to that limit so we're going to take the derivative of top so product rule is if I'm taking the derivative of f times g then it is equal to f prime times g plus f times g prime derivative of first times second one plus first one times the derivative of the second one so let's make f our g our f prime and g prime our f is e to the 7x and our g is sine of 3x f prime is the derivative of e to the 7x which is 7 e to the 7x and derivative of sine of 3x is 3 cosine of 3x so we're gonna write f prime times g 
f prime is 7 e to the 7 x and g is sine of 3 x plus we have f which is e to the 7 x times g prime which is 3 cosine of 3 x for the bottom function we're going to apply the same rule we need our f g f prime and g prime in this case our f is e to the 3x and our g is sine of 4x derivative of e to the 3x is 3 e to the 3x and derivative of sine of 4x is 4 cosine of 4x now we're going to multiply f prime times g which is 3 e to the 3x times sine of 4x plus f which is e to the 3x times g prime which is 4 cosine of 4x now we can plug in 0 if we plug in 0 here we obtain cosine of 0 which is 1 and if we plug in here 0 we obtain e to the 0 which is 1 and 3 times 1 is 3 so we obtain 3 from the second term here sine of 0 is 0 so 0 times anything is 0 we cancel and sine of 0 is 0 so we cancel everything here because 0 times anything is 0 cosine of 0 is 1 and e to the 0 is 1 and 4 times 1 is 4 so our limit is 3 fourths by the L'Hopital's rule.